Okay, so um, here's, the, we, here's the gonadotropic releasing hormone. Here's the levels of that. This is the follicle developing, so it develops from primordial to primary to secondary to tertiary ovulation, then into a corpus luteum, then into a um, mature corpus luteum, and then into a corpus, corpus albicans. And then down here is the ovarian hormone levels, okay? So we can kind of follow this along. And um, we see at the beginning of, um, on day one, we start out with a primordial follicle that has a primary oocyte, and the, um, the hypothalamus is just pulsing, kind of low. Um, and so here's our FSH and our um, LH here is in purple. And then what is in green? FSH and LH is the gonadotropic releasing hormone. So here's the gonadotropic releasing hormone and it's pulsing really low, okay? So in low pulsing, um, FSH and LH are not gonna be released. The low pulsing of the gonadotropic releasing hormone keeps the estrogen levels low. Then um, the gonadotropic releasing hormone starts to, as, as we see here, the, the follicle starts getting bigger and the follicle here starts to produce estrogens, right? So now we see an increase in estrogens. The gonadotropic releasing hormone, the pulsing rate gets higher, much higher. At the highest, at the peak, it's gonna cause the release of luteinizing hormone. So now luteinizing hormone gets released. That causes ovulation, right? So now we have ovulation. The, um, tertiary follicle um, becomes the corpus luteum, right? Now also at ovulation, the estrogen levels are gonna be at the peak, luteinizing hormones at its peak, FSH is at its peak. They're all at the peak at ovulation, right? After ovulation, the um, tertiary follicle degenerates into the corpus luteum and the estrogen levels start to fall. The pulsing of gonadotropic releasing hormone starts to fall as well. Right? So everything's falling. Um, but then the corpus luteum starts to produce um, hormones again, and it's, produ it's producing progesterone. So progesterone starts to get um, produced here, and then estrogens start to get produced as well. So we're getting progesterone and estrogen levels that are starting to get produced. Um, the estrogen and progesterone, the progesterone in particular, is going to keep this corpus luteum um, mature so that it keeps releasing um, estrogen and progesterone. It's going to keep the uterine lining thick, right? We can see up here, still gonadotropic releasing hormone, the pulse is really low. So FSH isn't being released, luteinizing hormone isn't being released. The corpus luteum then degenerates into the corpus albicans. At that point, it no longer produces estrogens or progesterone. Progesterone levels fall um, and estrogen levels fall. Okay, now we'll talk about inhibit in just a minute. So estrogen and progesterone levels fall, right? So now estrogen is at a low level and we start over again. Estrogens are at a low level, so gonadotropic releasing hormone, the pulsing is, is low, right? The follicles start to develop. We get to the secondary follicle, and those follicles start to produce estrogens. Estrogen level makes the gonadotropic releasing hormone um, start to pulse faster. By the time we get to ovulation, gonadotropic releasing hormone is pulsing as fast as it's going to, that causes the release of luteinizing hormone. Luteinizing hormone causes ovulation. It's just gonna keep going over and over again, right? So you wanna make sure that you study that. Do you guys have any questions on that? You kinda of have to think through it on your own to figure out what's causing what to be released, what's causing what to happen.
showing the three phases of the um, uterine cycle. So the first phase is the menstrual phase. That's where the endometrial lining sheds, usually lasts anywhere from one to seven days. At the end of that, we get the proliferative phase. So this is estrogen. Estrogen is starting to build, build, build that up. Oops. And then, and then we get to, and then this is gonna be at the end of proliferative phase, that's ovulation in the ovary. So the ovaries ovulate. The proliferative phase is done, and now we enter into the secretive phase. So that happens at about day 14. So at day 14, we're done with menstruation, we're done with the proliferative phase, and now we're, in, we're starting into the secretory phase. The secretory phase is gonna continue for another 14 days, and that lining of the endometrium continues to get thicker and thicker and thicker. Estrogen is making that thicker, progesterone is keeping that thick. At the end of that time, when estrogen levels and progesterone levels plummet, then this lining will be shed. So there's a couple of things that um, are noteworthy in this that a female can fully understand when she ovulates. So right around um, day 14 of ovulation, just prior to that, the body temperature is going to dip, okay? It just dips, um, just, just slightly from maybe 0.3 degrees um, Celsius, okay? So, or 0.5 degrees Fahrenheit, so just slightly, but enough so that if she's monitoring her temperature and she is in bed before she gets out of bed, monitors her temperature, if it dips down slightly close to day 14, that's an indication that that day she'll be ovulating, okay? The other thing that happens close to day 14 um, we're at the proliferative phase. Her cervical, um, her, her cervix is secreting um, a, you know, secretions all along, but the secretions are really um, dense, white, dryish um, mucus. And right around day 14, that mucus starts to get thinner and thinner and thinner, and right at the time of ovulation, the mucus, instead of being a solid white, is going to be a clear white, like egg white, and stretchy, where she'd be able to stretch it between her fingers without it breaking. That's because that's what's necessary for the sperm. The sperm have to have a very um, a friendly environment and be able to make its way into that um, external os, and then the internal os into the um, uterus, and then into the uterine tube. So the mucus at that time will be about um, very egg whitish, very thin um, egg white. All right. Shortly after that, 12 to 24 hours after that, the egg is no longer viable. The oocyte, that secondary oocyte, will degenerate and will no longer be able to be fertilized. That mucus immediately will turn into the thick, white, non stretchy um, type of mucus. Okay. Okay, so. Are there any questions on any of that? 123, sexual intercourse. How much of that is in your notes? I know STDs are not. I think we'll go upstairs, and I'm gonna let you guys. Um,